I want to make you feel right at home at White Leaf Baptist Church, and we pray that you'll get a blessing out of the worship service. Boy, I tell you what, if you wouldn't hear this morning, you missed out on some good food. We had a wonderful breakfast, but not to worry, I ate enough for all of us. <laughs> trust, trust me, trust me, it was good. It was good. Now we're going to have a time keeping everybody awake, those that were here. <laughs> Let me go over some announcements with you. Uh, as you know, we won't have no service tonight as we've had uh, the sunrise service. Now, all you men, please keep in mind, beginning tomorrow night at uh, 6.30 or 6 o'clock, I should say, is the men's discipleship class. This is for all ages, whether you're young, middle-aged, or uh, an elder. Uh, we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful Bible study. And it's only going to be once a week. It's going to be on a Monday, probably about 45 minutes uh, long. It's all we're going to be here. Uh, the only thing I ask is some of you men, please bring you a pen and a notebook. And if you forget it, we got you covered, okay? And then April the 3rd, next Wednesday uh, evening, will be the business meeting and prayer service. April the 7th, um, next Sunday, remember Sunday school. Uh, we start at 10 o'clock and... We have some wonderful Sunday school teachers that loves God and loves teaching the word. And if you'll come out, you'll be blessed. And then the evening service uh, always starts at six o'clock. Uh, all you ladies now, April the 18th, ladies craft night, it begins at 630. They always have a blast with that. And then Jackie, she's going to begin her ladies uh, Bible study uh, at, at six o'clock, April the 30th. Now, of course, ours is going to be probably five weeks. Uh, we'll probably do the last uh, uh, one in last session in one of the Sunday school classes. Um, <coughs> let Janky and the ladies have the sanctuary. But hers begins April the 30th. She's looking at me like, am I? It's on a different night. It's a different night. It's a different night. It's on, it's, it, you, it's Tuesday night? Tuesday. Okay, you all will be on Tuesday night. Well, April the 30th. Just write that down at 6 o'clock p.m. and we'll be the ladies' uh, Bible study. Uh, if you all are able, if you will, let's go ahead and stand as we salute our flags. And then we'll get right into the worship service. <coughs> the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for which kingdom it stands, one brotherhood, united all mankind, in service and in love. The Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp to my feet, a light to my path, will hide his words in my heart, that I might not sin against God. The American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <coughs> All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see you out on this Resurrection Sunday. And uh, we've already, some of us have already been here since uh, 6 30 this morning. We had a good good time this morning, good uh, preaching, good singing, good food afterwards. Uh, so, some of us are already good fired up this morning. Uh, we have a lot of special singing this morning, so we're just going to do one, and then we'll do an offertory hymn. So, if you don't like to sing one this morning, so sing good and loud this morning. It's on page 58. If you would get a hymn and help us all sing this morning. Page 58.
Next song I say will be on page 277 this morning. This will be our offertory hymn. And I'll ask for ushers to come forward as we sing. Jay, would you stay with us this morning? services that we had this morning, Lord, as we came to the sunrise service, and as, uh, as everything was coming alive, Lord, we uh, celebrated you. Yes. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for the Sunday school hour we had this morning, Lord, and all the teachers that were prepared and presented. Now we look forward to the message our brothers want to bring us. Yes. And Lord, we thank you for, for each one that's here this morning. I pray that they come for no other reason but to glorify you, Lord, and yes. to celebrate this special day together. Lord, well, now we want to go to this time of tithes and offerings. We just want to give back to you what you gave to bless us with, Lord. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In your son Jesus' name. Amen.
Anybody seen in the park? Come on up. Choir's going to do one this morning with a uh, just a melody of celebration, and then uh, we have several special singers that are going to be singing with us this morning. So we're going to uh, do ours first. While we're up here, and we'll sit down that way. Come up. <laughs> This time, we're going to ask Jennifer if she would come on up and uh, present her uh, 
for song this morning. This is one of my newer favorite songs, so I hope you all love it as much as I do. It's uh, Rhett Walker's Man on the Middle Cross. We just decided about an hour and a half ago we were going to do this, but we read it, sang it, practiced it. It may come out and sound like 
Sing it for the Lord. Just sing on. I just ask the Lord to give me, give me the prayer and strength to do this. Come up here or not, y'all look like you're looking for trouble. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. The name of this song is Easter Morning. So it fits. You got it? Thank you. 
several years ago I was so blessed to be able to go to Israel and we had we was over there at Easter time so we had communion in the tomb on Easter Sunday morning. Oh wow. And when I see that thing right there I was right there saw the tomb. They had it fixed with the wind and so it was really a neat experience. Well I think we have one Before I start, I just want to say a couple words. Um, as much as my grandmother would have loved to have been here, and everybody knows that she would have loved to have been here, she could. And this is her favorite song. And I felt moved by the Holy Spirit to sing it this morning. We give God thousands of reasons every single day for Him not to love us. Yet His grace, His mercy, and His long suffering surpasses all of our human understanding. Right, you do. I just have no words for it. I mean, it's, we just serve an amazing God. Yes, we do. He is risen. Amen. 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 Amen.
take our Bibles this morning as we go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. And you know, today is a day of celebration. Amen. 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 If that's all Jesus would have done was died on the cross, then that would have been notable. But there's no hope in that. But thank God that third and glorious day he rose again. And Jesus made it possible for each and every single one of us to be forgiven, to have hope for eternity's future. And all I thank the Lord for that. Yes. You know the the tomb where they believed that Jesus was laying. Uh, they had sent so many archaeologists over there, and they've dug in that uh, grave, and and with all their findings, they said we cannot find the slightest clue where a body had decayed away. I could have told them that. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I could have saved them a lot of money and effort and work if they'd just listened to me or read the Bible for themselves. <laughs> Amen. He arose that third and glorious morning, and because he lives, we will. All right, I trust that you found your place this morning. Luke chapter 24, uh, verse 13. Stand with me as we reference the reading of the Word of God. The Bible says in Luke 24, verse 13, And behold, two of them uh, went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score four longs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together in reason, Jesus himself uh, drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that he have one to, to the other as he walked and are so sad? And one of them, whose name was uh, Cleophas, answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and has not known the things which are come to pass uh, there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And now the chief priests and all the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that he had been he which should have redeemed Israel. Besides all of this, now today is the third day since these things were done. Uh, yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying and that they had also seen a vision of angels. Well, let's stop right here for a moment. They didn't see no vision. They seen literal angels. And they proclaimed to them that he is risen, just as he said beforehand, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher or the tomb and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Uh, then he said unto them, O fools of, and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Thank you. You may be seated. Now let's read on a little bit further that we can get a broader scope of the conversation and the things that's taking place. He says, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And of course, as we had talked about Wednesday night, um, Psalms chapter 22 is one of the greatest, the most famous Massionic Psalms that we have because it is a beautiful picture of his crucifixion and also Isaiah chapter 53. And uh, so he begins at Moses and he uh, teaches them the scriptures and, and what the prophet said concerning him and how he would die. In verse 28, and they drew near into the village uh, where they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards the evening, and the day is far spent. And he went and tarried with them. 
And it came to pass as he said it meet with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake and gave to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures, and they arose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared unto Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. As or And as they uh, thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. John MacArthur, John MacArthur is probably one of the America's most famous and beloved pastors. He said this, and I love doing a lot of, of quoting from John MacArthur, but he said this concerning the resurrection. He said the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the single greatest event in, in history of the world. It is, it is so the foundational to Christianity and that no one uh, who denies it can be a true Christian. A person who believes in a Christ who has not raised believes in a powerless Christ, a dead Christ. If Christ did not rise from the dead, then no redemption was accomplished at the cross. And your faith is worthless. And as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 17, you are yet still in your sins. Amen. Amen. But thank God he, he did do exactly what he said he would do. He arose and he defeated death, hell, and the grave. Yes, and he has brought to each and every single one of us the opportunity for that as well. Yes. Now this morning, um, as, we, as I want to present to you a thought, it is this. When our risen Savior draws near unto us, okay? Now, Luke is the only gospel writer that gives an account of this, of the two disciples that was leaving Jerusalem on the road of Emmaus, going back to their little small village, which would have been about seven miles northwest of Jerusalem. Here they are. They have left Jerusalem. It's been three days now. And we see them. As they walk along, their heads are hung low, they're sad, and they have this conversation. But yet, Jesus draws near unto them and he joins himself in their conversations. The Bible says that they didn't know it was Jesus. But in the Gospel of John, when Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, she didn't know it was Jesus until Jesus spoke to her. You see, let me say this. No man can know who Jesus is until he reveals himself to us. That's right. You see, a lot of people say, well, I, I know who God is. No, you don't. Right. No, you don't. If you did, you wouldn't be blaspheming his precious name. That's exactly Amen. right. All right? None of us can know who God is until he reveals himself. Yes. But now listen. Here's a thought. When our risen Savior draws near to us, it's when we are broken and disappointed. Now, as they walk on, on the Emmaus Road back from Jerusalem, heading to their little small village, here they are. They're broken. They're troubled. They're confused. Now, Jesus made so many attempts to prepare his disciples and the women for these upcoming days. He didn't want them to weep. He didn't want them to be broken. He didn't want them to be confused. He didn't want their world turned upside down. He made every attempt possible. You know, the Bible says this in Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that of a broken heart and say as such is of a contrite spirit. In John chapter 13 and 14, he's dealing with his going away, okay? He says in John 14, 1, let not your hearts be troubled. He believed in God, believe also in me. Just as God sent Moses to deliver their ancestors from Egypt's bondage, they were looking for another Moses type figure. They were looking for another deliverer. And, and they thought Jesus was he. They misunderstood his mission, or his mission, his message, and his method. But now, being eyewitnesses to his crucifixion, and being eyewitnesses to how they uh, put him in a tomb and sealed it up, and now three days later, 
their hopes and their anticipations for the future is absolutely shattered. Their dreams, the very thing they had hoped for and wished for, it was now shattered. What looked like the end for so many was only the beginning. <coughs> you know what, friends, if you're broken, if you're disappointed, he is near. Yes, he is. You know what? He's only a prior way. Yes, thank you. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call on me and I will answer thee and show thee great mighty things which thou knowest not. So he draws near unto us when we're broken, when we're disappointed. He draws near unto us, secondly, to restore peace. Now, as they had walked openly with the Lord for three years, they had peace. And, as, and of course, as you know, Jesus is a prince of peace, as Isaiah the prophet said that he was in chapter 9, verse 6. And you know what? If one desires to have real peace, you must walk with him. Yes. Amen to that. Amen. And, and, and really, really, isn't that what all men is seeking for in this life? Is to have real, true, genuine peace? Amen. In order to have that, friends, you must find yourself walking with the risen Savior. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. They had that. But here's the question. What happened? Because as we see them on the pages of the scriptures, they have everything but peace. Right. Heads hung low, walking as though they have no hope. Hey, listen to me. I see a lot of Christians doing this myself today. Yeah. Friends, why do we go about with our head hung low as though we have no hope whatsoever? Paul says, lift up those hands that hang at the feeble means. Lift up your hands. Lift up your eyes. We do have hope. Yeah. Right. Amen. Y'all going to get me excited like you did this morning. <laughs> Come on, Come on with it. I threw my voice out. <laughs> If I'm ever going to throw it out, it ain't going to be at no ball game. Amen. He'll be preaching the word of God. Watch it, Brother Dave. Don't kill the service as you just get started. <laughs> Listen to me. They had peace. Now it's gone. There are so many things in this life can strip the believer from peace. And I don't have time to go into all of them. But, but one thing in particular here is unbelief. Is their unbelief. And again, the disciples was with Jesus when he told the so-called religious leaders this in, in Matthew 12, 40. He says, just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He says, tear down this temple and I will rise it, raise it again the third day. He was talking about his, his body. Yes. And, and in Matthew chapter 16, verse 21, the Bible says from that time forth began to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, but that he would rise again the third day. Yes. Peter takes him by the hand, pulls him over to the side. Peter rebukes him. Jesus says, get thee behind me, Satan. Yes. Jesus wasn't calling Peter Satan. But Jesus was acknowledging that, that Satan's motives was behind Peter. Yes. Satan tried his best to stop Jesus from going to the cross. That's right. And that stupid old devil, that stupid old devil thought he could confine the Son of God to a tomb. Yep. Amen. Wow. So now listen, as I said before, with all of the attempts that Jesus made to forewarn the disciples, they forgot while his enemies remembered. Right. This same bunch went to the governor, Pilate. They said, we remember that that deceiver, while he was yet alive, says, in three days I will rise again. So make the tomb as secure as you can. At least somebody comes and steals the body, and the last shall be greater than the first. Friends, listen to me. That tomb was as secure as Fort Knox. Yes. A lot of times on these movies, they, <clears throat> they, they are misleading. They really are. That stone wasn't just a little bitty stone. It was a massive stone. Some believe that even in the entranceway of the tomb, they had dug out a hole so that when this massive stone rolled into the entranceway, it fell into this hole, locking it into place. 
It would have took 20 strong men to move that stone out of its place. But you know what Jesus did? Jesus walks right through that stone. The Gospel of John says when the disciples was hid behind a closed door, every lock they could put on the door they did for fear of the Jews. But you know what Jesus does? Jesus goes right through that door without even opening it. Amen. You're not even you're not going to be able to keep him in or out. Woo! Right. I love it. I love it. But listen to me. You might want to write this down. His <coughs> friends forgot while his enemies remembered. They had everything but peace. You know, as we often say, the women was the last at the cross and the first at the tomb. The women come that third and glorious morning. They didn't come with worship and praise and excitement in their heart. No, they too came with their heads hung low, broken, weeping, crying, because their dear friend was now gone. But it, it, listen, if they had remembered the words of Jesus, it would have been a totally different different atmosphere they would have came with great rejoicing coming to the tomb knowing that Jesus has done what he said he would do glory to God you better watch out now I'm, I'm, I'm liable to get excited you see he comes to restore peace Oftentimes, believers can lose that peace Thank God we can't lose salvation, but Amen. you can sure lose peace and joy. And then, thirdly, he draws near in the times of our doubts and fear. Now, don't you think that this was very hurtful to Jesus, spending all this time with them, uh, teaching them the word of God, for them just to doubt his person and his deity? Of course, that was hurtful. But you know something? He loved them anyway. That's right. You know, in the times of our weakness, when our faith gets so weak and low, and Jesus still loves you. That's right. You know, as I said this morning, friends, as I said this morning, you can do nothing more to make God love you anymore. I mean, the, the, God loves you unconditionally. And knowing that makes me want to love him that much more. In all of our doubts and all of our fears, God draws near to us. Yeah. So as Jesus begins to expound upon the scriptures, beginning at Moses up to this present time, as he talked with them, their hearts burned. You know, Jeremiah the prophet said there in chapter 23, verse 29, It's not my word, uh, saith the Lord, like a far, far ignites a passion within us. That's what happens, friends, when we read and study and apply the Word of God to our lives, right? Right. With Mary Magdalene, you know, the Bible says in the book of Matthew, the women came, but Mary, she outran. She, out, she, she, she just took off a run into the tomb. Mary Magdalene knew all about darkness. She had, uh, I believe it was seven demonic spirits within her. But Jesus cast them out and delivered her out of the power of darkness into his marvelous light. Friends, listen, nothing has changed. That's right. God still does that today. No matter what kind of sin you're engaged in or that you found yourself bound up with, God still sets people free the moment they call upon him. I'm a true believer in that. I'm a walking testimony of that. The Bible says so. So here's Murray. She doubted. She's fearful. She looks in the tomb. She, she, she doesn't see the body. The angel says, woman, whom seekest thou? She says, Jesus, if you know where they have laid him, let me know. And she turns and she sees what she thinks is a gardener. She says, sir, if you know where they have taken him, tell me that I can go get him. You know what Jesus says to her? He says, Mary. That's all it took. Her eyes was open. She'd seen Jesus. Yes. You know, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, know my sheep, and have known of mine. He says in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. 
and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. Mary heard Jesus speak her name many times. You see, the good shepherd, when he speaks, we know his voice. Yes. We know his voice. Friends, listen, one of these days, the good shepherd's coming back for his sheep. Yes, he is. When he does, he's going to call us each and every single one at the same time by our name. Yeah. There's some things I can't, I can't explain, but I believe. Right. All right? So how did he calm the doubts and fears with Mary? Just speaking her name. What about the women? It was the angels that confirmed the Lord's words. He's risen as he said he would do. What about the disciples? Jesus appeared to them and he says, come, touch me. T touch the, the nail prints, hands in my feet and, and in my hands and thrust your hand into my side. Believe in what, what about with Thomas? Jesus said this with Thomas. He says, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Folks, listen, you and I are more blessed by not seeing Jesus than they was by seeing Jesus. Because we have exercised faith in something that we've not seen. We've only seen him through the eyes of faith. And like I said this morning, friends, listen. I know that I know that I know that I know he is risen. Yes. And I know that I know that I know that I'm going to heaven when I die. Amen. There's some things Jesus has made it very clear that you can know. Amen. Amen. People say, well, preacher, I don't know if I'm saved or not. I don't know if I'm going to heaven or not. You better be getting on your face before God. Yes. You can know. The Bible says now we can know that we pass from death unto life because we love the brother. Yes. I mean, there's just some things we can know. Friends, when it comes to one's eternal destination, you better know beyond the shadow of the doubt where you're going to spend eternity. It'll either be in heaven or hell. That's right. Mm. And then he draws near in the times of our lack of understanding. Now that Jesus rose from the grave and he has appeared before all of them, the things that he had told them previously that seemed to be such a mystery or a dark parable was now crystal clear. Jesus knew the plan and purpose that God the Father had for him. It was to go to Calvary's cross and lay down his life for each and every single one of us. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. Friends, listen, as I said Wednesday night, I'm going to say it again. Jesus went through hell on that cross for six long hours. Yes. He went through such agonizing pain that we cannot even begin to comprehend. He did that in order to save each and every single one of us. But friends, here's the sad commentary that a multitude of people is dying and going to hell today because they reject the Son of God. The Bible says in Hebrews 2, 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? There is no escape. Don't make the mistake to assume that you're going to heaven because of what Jesus did upon the cross. The Lord says in Luke 13, 3, I tell you, nay, except a man repent, he shall all likewise perish. Until one comes to repent and places their faith and trust in the Son of God, friends, you'll die lost. You'll die lost. And you know something? We as Christians, we know that there's a plan and purpose for our life too. And, and friends, look, we're not always going to understand everything that God does in our life. Right. But you know what we're told to do? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. I don't always know what God's doing in my life, but I trust him. Yes, right. Amen. I don't always know what God is doing in your life, but I say to you, trust him. Because, brother, he is trustworthy. Amen. He is trustworthy. Last but not least, the Lord draws near unto us in times of great blessings. Now, if you'll drop down in verse 50 as we conclude. Look what he says in verse 50. The Bible says, And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands, and he blessed them. 
Now, you, you and I know that sometimes the blessings of God comes through obedience. Yes. Sometimes the blessings of God comes through prayer. Ask and shall be given you. Seek and shall find. Knock and shall be opened unto you. But friends, sometimes those blessings come for no reason at all. Because it is God's good pleasure to bless us. Right. And you know something this morning? I stand here overlooking each and every single one of us this morning can say, Brother Dave, I am blessed. Amen. I am blessed. I got up early this morning and let the little dog out. I was sitting out there on the porch waiting on him. I got a little chilly. I got a little aggravated because I kept hollering at him and he kept ignoring me. <laughs> <laughs> Something about me and mama back there when she says, Charlie, get in here. But he gets in. He knows he can get by a whole lot with me. But when I got back in the house, I went back to bed. Boy, I covered up. You know, Lonnie, you know what I got to thinking? You know what I was doing laying in bed? I thought, thank you, Jesus, for a soft bed. Thank you, Jesus, for covers to knock off the chill. Thank you, Jesus, for a roof over my head, clothes on my back, food on the table. Yeah. Friends, listen, every one of us is blessed more so than you realize. Amen. Every one of us is blessed. Yes. Yes. But now listen, the greatest blessing that Jesus wants to give to men today is eternal life. Yes. Thank you. This life is quickly passing by. Yes. It's You know, it's life. Life is funny in a way. You young people ain't going to understand this. I didn't when I was young. Here I am today, 55 year old. And it's like, you know, you go to bed, you go to bed young, you wake up the next morning old, and you're like, where did life go? Right. <laughs> Trust me, young people, you don't know what I'm talking about one of these days. <laughs> the greatest blessing, friends, is to repent, say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, come into my heart, save my soul. Lord, I want this blessed hope the preacher's talking about. Yeah. I want to know beyond the shadow of a doubt. Today's a day that we're going to eliminate all doubts. Friends, listen. There's no peace in, in doubts. Hey, listen, I've been there. I've been there wondering, am I saved? Am I lost? Am I going to heaven? I hope so. Friends, I, I listen. That can, that can, that can destroy you. Yes, it you need to know. You need to know beyond the shadow of the doubt yes. that Jesus Christ is in your heart and life yes. and that you're saved and that you have this blessed assurance, blessed hope that if I die today, I'm going to heaven. Amen. Yes, I want you to stand to your feet. Yes. Friends, look, listen, this is why we celebrate Easter. This is why we celebrate the resurrection because he lived. Be, be, listen. Listen. Jesus says in Revelation 1.18, I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of death and hell. He's saying in so many words, I have victory. And if you want victory over death, hell, and the grave, you've got to go to Jesus. Amen. Bow your heads just for a moment. Nobody looking around. I want you to stand still as possible. I promise you I will not come back there and embarrass you, okay? This is only be between me, you, and God. I wonder this morning if you'd be honest. Say, Brother Dave, pray for me. I'm not saved. I, I know if I died right now, I would end up in hell. I want you to raise your hand. Take it back down. Friends, this won't save you. Bless your heart. It won't save you, but it's a start in the right direction. Because you're acknowledging that you're lost. You're acknowledging you need to be saved. Yeah. Anybody, anybody else in the house of God, you say, Brother David, pray for me. I will not embarrass you. I promise you. Nobody and nobody but me, you, and God. Lift your hand and say, Brother David, I'm lost. Bless your heart. Bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Listen. You say, Brother David, folks, listen to me. There was a time in my life I made a false profession. The preacher came out to witness to my mom and dad. They got saved, and I thought, well, it seems like the right thing to do. He said, boys, repeat after me, but, remain, but mean it with your heart. I didn't mean it. I made a false profession. I was even baptized and on my way to a devil's head. I know I've been there. 
You say, Brother David, pray for me. I think I'm saved, but I just don't know. I'm haunted with doubts. Pray for me. Raise your hand. Take it back down. Anybody. You say, bless your heart. Thank you for your honesty. Anybody else. You, you say, Brother David, I think I'm saved. I just don't know beyond the shadow of the doubt. I don't have that confidence you have. Raise your hand. Take it back down. Anybody. You say, Brother David, you can't make me doubt my salvation. I'm saved. I've been baptized. But honestly, I'm not where I need to be with God. I'm not walking as close to the Lord as I need to be. I want you to lift your hand. Take it back.